folks, and welcome to Truck King. Yes, it's official. The Land Cruiser is back in North America. Now, this might not be recognizable as a Land Cruiser compared to the old model because everything has changed. So in this video, we'll crawl all over this thing, look at all the features, tell you how it drives, and then ultimately tell you, does it really live up to that Land Cruiser name? Let's jump right into it. by looking under the hood. So in North America, there's only one engine available in the Land Cruiser. It's a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder mated to a hybrid setup. Total system output, 326 horsepower, 465 pound-feet of torque, sent through an eight-speed automatic transmission. And yes, this is the same power plant you're gonna find over there in the Tacoma and in the 4Runner. Again, the big difference is the Land Cruiser is hybrid only. So this Land Cruiser we're looking at here is just the Land Cruiser trim. That's what they call it. And the big differentiator is the headlights and the grille. If you go for the base 1958 model, you get the Heritage round headlights, which personally I like a little bit better. And then if you step up to Land Cruiser, you get these squared off headlights. So yes, the look is actually quite different moving from trim to trim. And you know what, let's just take a break right now. Please drop into the comments and let me know, which one do you prefer, round headlights or square headlights? Land Cruiser here is all about utility. So Toyota tells us this thing can tow 6,000 pounds, same as that new 4Runner. And I'll just show you the hitch down here. It comes behind this big old plastic cover. It is certainly a, a funny looking hitch. And one thing to note, they have this extra reinforcement here. Well, that means that your actual kingpin you use here to secure your hitch has to be longer than a standard pin. That's the same for Tacoma, probably same for 4Runner as well. So something to note if you're gonna tow with one of these. And then one thing which is not ideal here on this SUV is the light hookups for the trailer are way down here underneath the bumper. Yeah, they're just a pain to get to if you're hooking up in the wet or the mud or something. It just, uh, it's no fun to have to go so deep under there. I'm surprised Toyota couldn't flush mount them up here in the bumper or something like that. So yes, let's also talk about the utility of the back end of this thing. First of all, you do get glass that opens individually from the hatch. We don't have the split tailgate design here like Land Cruisers were known for, or even the side hinge design, which a lot of Land Cruisers had. This is much more standard to what we expect today from SUVs and you do get the powered hatch. Now when it comes to storage back here, and I should also point out Land Cruiser does not get a third row. This is how every single Land Cruiser would look. You do get quite a bit of space back here, even behind that second row. And then if you want to, you can tumble that and that opens up even more space. So I do like the amount of cargo space that's back here. Cause again, that's what this vehicle is really all about, right? It's about getting out with all of your stuff. And in that vein too, one other great feature right down here, a plug with 2,400 watts of power. So a real legitimate amount of power for when you're out on the trail, camping, off-roading or hiking. Alrighty folks, so now here we are off-road in the Land Cruiser. So this is the Land Cruiser 1958 that we're in, yep. which is the base model. And we have also done this course in the upgraded Land Cruiser trim, so we get a feel for it. Now the, the basics are the same. Full-time four-wheel drive, a locker in the rear, a center differential which can be locked up and and we also do get different drive modes here plus crawl control the one thing we don't get that is multi-terrain select that only comes in the higher trim models but outside of that we pretty much have everything you need to go off-road except for the screens we don't have the camera system mm, that is true also the multi-terrain monitor you are right about that too which comes on automatically in the other truck when you go down into four low there's actually a whole bunch of little things like they're decontented this one here 
Um, so it's it's definitely much more simplistic. Yeah, 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 more basic, and that's what they're going for, right? Offering the basic trim at a more affordable price, but I still won't call it overall affordable, and we'll get to the pricing in a little bit. For now, tell me how you're feeling, because we're coming through these big offset ruts. We're losing traction right about here. Nice, and is your center diff locked right it now? It is locked. So having the center diff locked is important, then you get the 50-50 torque split. And we could have locked the rear, but we didn't. I will say what I've been feeling, Dad, because we've done this a bunch of times, Toyota is really good at brake-based traction control. At one wheel starts to spin, they'll brake it, send the power across to where it needs to be. And uh, yeah, it, it reacts really quickly in there, wouldn't you say? Exactly, and you know, the thing to remember here too, if you're looking at the Land Cruiser and then the 58, um, the running gear is basically the same. Mm -hmm. So realistically, if you're trying to decide which to get, it's gonna be creature comforts, not ability. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And nice, even right there, that's a 30 degree uh, side angle. And I know that because of the inclinometer in the Land Cruiser. In the other one, not it, this one. Right, not in this one, but yeah, in the Land Cruiser trim. And uh, no problem. It, it certainly feels like a vehicle straight out of the box that's meant for this environment, right? Very sort much of so. Like a Wrangler, like a Bronco, you get behind the wheel and you just kind of realize this is what they were engineering for, you know, sort of top of mind. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, I think for the purist, for the person who truly is more interested in the off-road, they may very well go in this direction because it's it's simple, it's straightforward, it's got everything you need and, uh, and nothing you don't. Sure. And then the old story of if you are a hardcore off-roader, you're probably going to modify it. So the 58 is probably your choice. Save the money on the actual vehicle from the dealership and then spend the money in the aftermarket, right? Yeah. Well, further, furthermore, Stephen, you're, you're aware that it's called the 1958 because that was the first year Land Cruiser was introduced to North America. Right. Which also happens to be the year that I was introduced to North America. <laughs> so being that it's a 58 and I'm also a 58, uh, yeah, this would be my choice. So are you a classic now too? Damn straight I am. <laughs> I'm a little worse for wear, but I am classic. <laughs> so yeah, no doubt a lot of Land Cruisers will come out here and do this, but we also recognize a lot of them are going to live their life on road. So why don't we cut to that right now? Because I did get a chance to drive it on road in a short loop and I can tell you what that's like. Okay, folks, now we're on road here in the Land Cruiser, and I'm going to punch it. And the power delivery feels really good. Again, thanks to that hybrid, you get the low end torque out of the battery, gives the turbo a chance to spool up, and it absolutely goes. So, yeah, I don't think power will be a problem, especially considering all of these things are hybrid. Now, when it comes to the driving dynamics, it's got a bit of body roll to it, but nothing too egregious. I think the exact amount you'd expect out of an SUV like this. And the idea there, of course, is this thing is meant to go off-road, so the suspension can't be too stiff for when you do start crashing through the bush. So it's that nice mixture of sort of uh, soft, but not too soft. So we do have three drive modes here as well. We have sport, normal, and eco mode. So you can take advantage of those. And I'll also remind you, Land Cruiser, this is full-time four-wheel drive. You do not get the opportunity to put it into rear wheel like you do the other trucks in this lineup. But I, again, I think the philosophy there is just the, the confidence that you get out of the full-time system. You never have to worry about it. If you're driving around in sloppy weather conditions, you know it's on, you know it's ready to go. You don't have to fiddle with anything whatsoever. So I think that's why that choice was made for Land Cruiser. And I think quite honestly, we can admit that this might not be the hardcore off-road customer, the kind of person who, again, doesn't want to have to turn a knob or fiddle with dials. So I think that's why Toyota went the route of the full-time four-wheel drive here. So we're back out of here on the trail now, and I mentioned it on-road. The power felt really good, but Dad, you're driving here and, you know, four low, just picking along. Uh, what do you think about the powertrain? It's quite responsive, and the one nice thing with it is it doesn't feel too jerky mm -hmm. as soon as you get into it, which is a fault of some vehicles, particularly in four low, sure. where they're super aggressive, and that's where you want to be smooth when you're picking through. So all in all, I say, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I would agree with you. So now, why don't we get around to the pricing? So first, I'll throw out the U.S. prices. And uh, yes, you're going to notice a stark difference between the U.S. and Canada. In the United States, 
the Land Cruiser starts at $55,950, which is for this 1958 that we're in here. Step up to the Just Land Cruiser trim, you're talking about $61,950. And then the first edition, and of course that thing is limited to just 5,000 units, uh, and when they're done, they're gone. That thing sells for $74,000 in the US. All in all, uh, those prices feel correct to both of us, I think, right? The US prices are, feel like it's, uh, it's not a huge value, but it doesn't feel overpriced. No. But then we get to the Canadian market, where the Land Cruiser 1958 starts at 69,290, we can call it 70 grand in Canada. Step up to the Land Cruiser trim, you're talking about 77,290, and then the premium package Land Cruiser trim, 83,290. Finally, the first edition, and again in Canada, we're getting just over 200 of them, so there's really not going to be a lot around, but the first edition sells for $90,000 in Canada and now we can say it straight up that Toyota Canada has gone much more aggressive with their pricing strategy on Land Cruiser and on Tacoma than Toyota USA and no for all of you wondering pricing is not just a conversion from the states to whatever other country pricing is set in each country individually and in this case obviously the Canadians just truly believe that these things can fetch more money so yeah that's the downside of this Land Cruiser absolutely in Canada it's expensive is that gonna matter for the sales that remains to be seen all right, so now we spit out those prices. I think the conversation we have to have is just what's going to set the Land Cruiser apart, especially from the Forerunner. On paper, Land Cruiser and Forerunner are almost the exact same length. They're the same width. They have the same wheelbase, same suspension, same powertrain, same frame, same frame. Same so, so many things are the frame here, or the same here. Um, so yeah, I think that that question is going to come up a lot. Why is should you go for one over the other? And I'll tell you my my first initial take on it is that Forerunner we don't have pricing yet, but I think Forerunner pricing is going to go right around Land Cruiser. I expect it to be more affordable on the base end, but way more expensive on the top end. I really believe that because Forerunner has nine trims in the states, seven trims in Canada. Land Cruiser once first edition is gone has two trims, so they really didn't allow people to kind of build this thing the way they wanted they kind of set it up the way Toyota wants whereas Forerunner has a lot more you know combinations so I think that's one of the main reasons right there Forerunner you might be drawn by that low price but if the prices were the same why would you go for one over the other and again to me to the way I feel this thing I think the Forerunner will be the more hardcore off-roader. I think with the Pro and the Trail Hunter, of course, that's obvious. But, you know, just the fact the ground clearance is a bit better, the angles are a bit better on Forerunner. Mm. I see it as, yeah, sort of more for the enthusiast, where I see the Land Cruiser more of the weekend warrior, if you want to call it that. Somebody who's mostly going to spend their time in town and then every now and then might get out for an adventure or maybe just wants to embrace the adventurous spirit and own a Land Cruiser. I don't want to call it a, a poser mobile because it actually is legitimately good out here, but I do feel like that's the split is the Forerunner, yeah, is more for that hardcore automotive enthusiast and Land Cruiser is more for somebody who just maybe just wants to get into this. That sound maybe right? You're right to a certain extent. However, I'll explore the other side of this, which is uh, there are people who identify themselves with what they own. And a forerunner guy will not be a Land Cruiser guy. And a Land Cruiser guy ain't a forerunner guy. Simply because whatever that vehicle, whatever it says about you, that is their first and major concern. So yeah, they may be off-roaders, they may be looking at the equipment and everything else, but at the end of the day, in their hearts, they're like, well, man, I want a Land Cruiser because I'm a Land Cruiser guy. That's, sure. that's, this truck says something about me. The history, the nostalgia, the worldwide appeal, okay? Whereas Forerunner, very much a North American phenomenon, mm -hmm. okay, and inbred uh, into you know, so many people's hearts as being the one that can do anything and go anywhere. Uh, yeah, it can do that. But there's guys still running in forerunners who don't go anywhere. Sure. But they're still, they're a forerunner guy. So let's never, you know, discount the fact that people are, you know, they care about the image. 
this is all image stuff. Mm -hmm. And that is a part of our business that sometimes we don't talk a lot about sure. because we're so hung up on the technical details. Yeah. You know, so anyway, I think that's going to play into it as well. That's fair. And, and I will say style wise from the exterior and interior, they're entirely different. They do not look the same. Forerunner looks way angrier to me than the Land Cruiser does. And then the interior layout is entirely different. So yeah, it's not like you're buying something and then going, oh, if this really is the same inside. They are quite different physically, but I understand what you're saying. And I think Toyota is really banking on that. They realize that, you know what, this SUV segment is big enough that we can have two essentially the exact same size vehicles and not have them cannibalizing from one another. Now, of course, this all remains to be seen. All we can do is sit back and watch how they sell. But uh, yeah, I, I do think you're correct in that Toyota looked at the market and said, these are two different customers and we wanna make sure we serve them both. Well, folks, we have arrived at the end of this one. Now, this is just our first taste in this new Land Cruiser, but you know as soon as we can get one back home, we will take it and off-road it on our trails. For now, I think my overall takeaway, besides the fact that I do like the Land Cruiser, is it is legitimately different than a 4Runner, than a Tacoma. I thought they were really crowding the segment, but actually after being in it, yeah, I think this is a totally different customer than the 4Runner will attract, and for Toyota, that's a good thing. But now, of course, I need to hear from you, so please go below into the comments, let me know what you think of the new Land Cruiser. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that join button to become a member of our channel, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.